The uh, hour of 7 o'clock having arrived, I'll call the council to order. Let the roll reflect that all council members are in attendance and a quorum has been established. Council, you have before us the uh, minutes of the regular meeting of March 2nd, 2015. Is there any additions or corrections to the minutes of that meeting? Okay, seeing none, they stand approved. Tonight uh, we have a presentation by Monsanto Fund Program, and I'm going to call on our distinguished uh, Chief of Police to introduce that item. Chief, welcome uh, to the meeting. We're glad to have you here. Good evening, Your Honor, Council Members. Uh, tonight, I'm just going to make a real brief introduction because uh, Monsanto's got a, a few words to say to explain this donation. But uh, the presentation tonight is uh, a $2,500 donation to the uh, Hastings Police Department, Hastings Police Department Canine Unit. And uh, what we, who we have with us is Travis Roll. He's a local farmer. We visit a little bit. Uh, I came from the farm, so it was kind of nice to talk about uh, old times, but it's changed a lot in 30 years. So, uh, But uh, anyway, he's a local farmer over in the Prescott River Falls area and uh, represents Monsanto. So I'll let him explain a little bit about what the, uh, what the f uh, program's about, how this came about, and then uh, we'll have him present the, uh, the check. Okay. Welcome to the meeting. We're gl very glad to have you here. Thank you. Good evening. Like uh, Brian said, uh, my name is Travis Roll. I am um, a farmer across the river in Wisconsin, but I'm actually employed by Monsanto as a district sales rep in this area right here and have a couple of dealers in the community. Um, basically, the Monsanto Fund is, uh, is making a donation tonight on, the, uh, on behalf of the Grow Communities or the Grow Communities Fund. Under this program in uh, 1,300 counties across the United States, um, Monsanto donates different grants and different amounts of money to uh, people who have been nominated. In your guys' um, community, Kayla Kimmis nominated the Hastings Police Department Canine Unit to receive the grant. She's uh, one of our growers and she was the winning farmer selected in Dakota County on behalf of a letter she wrote on your guys' part. So I'm here to present that award. Um, basically, you guys are the winners for Dakota County, and uh, it's going to be a $2,500 donation on behalf of the Monsanto Fund to the Hastings Police Department K-9 unit. So, yeah. The, the final thought that Monsanto Fund would have is that we just want to thank the Hastings Police Department and the K-9 unit specifically for the work they do in your guys' community. So. Thank you very much, Travis. On behalf of the community, we would like to thank Monsanto. And also, uh, please name again the individual who won the award who donated it here. Yep, uh, Kayla Kimmis was the growers, the winning grower's name. Okay, thank you. We, she was we unable to be that. with us tonight. So, thank you. Yeah, tonight we have a, uh, we have uh, the uh, the donation is going to our canine. We have Officer Mike Schmitz here, who is our canine officer, and Ozzy, who's our who's our uh, canine, canine officer dog. So. <laughs> Great. All right, thank you. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Thank you, Ozzy. Uh, next council, we have uh, items to be considered. I do have one. You'll see at your at your desk a uh, live burning training agreement uh, that's asked to be added onto the consent agenda tonight. So I just wanted to mention that, and then uh, I'll take that as an amendment to once we get to the consent agenda, and then make an announcement at the consent agenda. So that'll be what we'll add on. So consent agenda council, uh, we have uh, again a request for a live burning training agreement. Is there a Motion to approve to put that on consent. Councilmember Alonji makes that motion to approve, seconded by Councilmember Balsanic. Councilmember Balsanic. Actually, I'd like to pull that out because I have a couple of questions about it. The uh, live burning? Okay. Uh, certainly, Councilmember, we'll put that uh, under administration number th three, the new three. Okay. okay. So that'll be a number three under administration prior to closed door session. 
Uh, at consent agenda, also, council members, I'm going to ask that we uh, uh, withdraw the authorized signature development agreement for South Pines 8 edition be withdrawn. Uh, there's still a uh, discussions between the developer and staff uh, on that item. So uh, with that withdrawn, uh, I don't need a motion for that, do I? Should I take one? I was thinking, okay, so that, that will be withdrawn, and uh, I'll uh, seek a motion to accept the consent agenda. Councilmember Brox makes that motion to accept or to move, seconded by Councilmember Schultz. That motion is now before the body. Is there any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Next, we'll go to awarding of contracts and public hearing. We have tonight an award of contract for a resolution for the Riverfront Renaissance Phase Two improvements, uh, Sheehy Construction. Nick, our Public Works Director, welcome to the meeting. Thank you, Mayor Hicks, City Council members. Good evening. Uh, the Engineering Department opened up three bids just more than a week ago for our Riverfront Renaissance Phase Two project. We did get a favorable price from the uh, low bidder, and the, the second place bidder wasn't too far off either. Uh, third one was a little bit higher, uh, but it was adequate competition that uh, we were hoping for, considering the bidding environment right now with construction projects. So it was good to see. Uh, Sheehy Construction, as the mayor said, did submit the lowest of the three bids at uh, $2,473,000, roughly. And uh, after performing a very thorough reference check on Sheehy and looking into their performance history, uh, bonding capabilities, equipment, et cetera. Uh, we have concluded they're definitely capable uh, and able to do this project for us. And uh, so what we're recommending is to award the contract to them tonight, and that's what you all have a resolution in front of you uh, for consideration. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Uh, so we'll bring that to, uh, to the Council. Diaz, uh, is there any discussion? Um, Council, what's your wish? Councilmember Balsanic makes a motion to approve. Second by Councilmember Alonji. That motion is now before the body to approve. Discussion to that motion. Councilmember Schultz. Your Honor, um, on, in our packet, um, Nick, you had mentioned, um, it said, with this information, staff is now able to offer a better picture of the funding mixture for the project. See next page, and I don't have the next page. Oh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I can walk through those funding allocations step by step here. Um, is, or is it this really long page with the really tiny printing? <laughs> it was a 21-page memo. I'm not okay. Yeah, sure that's exactly not that's which. not in here. I don't think. Okay. Uh, well, my apologies for that if it somehow got missed. I'll just list off the major funding contributions towards the project then. We have, uh, of course, the contract itself, and then we have overhead costs, the design, the inspection, project administration, uh, and so on. And a total project cost for this project is about $2.975 million when you add everything up. Uh, the bulk of that will come from our bonded debt load, $2.1 million. Uh, and then we go down, we've got about 130000 from our water fund, about 35000 from our sewer fund. We've got some utility adjustments that we're making in the park as a result of uh, the work here. We've got about 162000 from our uh, levy park fund balance, and then 50000 additional funding from our parks uh, equipment revolving fund. Do, do I have that description right, Melanie? Uh, and then the remainder is a half million dollars through the Rotary Club's donations to contribute towards the pavilion component of the project. So all told, that adds up to two million nine hundred and seventy-three thousand dollars. Okay, thank you, um, Your Honor. Uh, one other follow-up: back in um, January, when we when we um, authorized that um, you advertise for bids, I have a I have a note here here that says three point oh seven million. Was that a cost estimate at that time, and now it's to, it, but that's changed to 2.9. Correct. Yes, okay. that was purely estimation based on available data at the time. Of course, we hadn't put it to the market yet uh, for contractors to bid on, and now after that's played out, this is the end result. Now we know what contractors bid on it. Your Honor, one more, one more question. Councilmember Schultz. Um, and does this cover all the costs down there, or are there other things that? 
are missing or when I don't mean the word missing but that might need to be added on at some point that aren't calculated in that 2.9 it is all inclusive for phase two yep there are some things that we uh, will purchase outright outside of the contract for outfitting uh, the remainder of the project specialty items that don't really fit into the mold of the uh, construction contract and those were accounted for not only in that estimate in January but also in this one okay thank you okay Melanie your honor and council I, I would like to point out a Nick's memo if, if you didn't get that second page um, we also have applied for a rig grant which is a redevelopment incentive grant through Dakota County CDA um, we expect to know we know in about a month or so whether we are successful but indications now that are we uh, we may be awarded between 200 and 250 thousand um, dollars to offset the cost of the project so um, should we be successful in that grant we, um, it would be staff's recommendation that we no longer use um, any fund balance or ERF funds for the project thank you okay councilmember balsanic yes thank you mayor I, I just to uh, point out uh, that this is funding for phase two of the Riverfront Renaissance uh, project down at Levy Park and uh, it is completely separate funding from the phase one project uh, that was done down at Levy Park uh, last year so the two funds are not mixed together uh, and I'm just uh, uh, bringing this up again because of the uh, uh, publicity regarding the general contractor from phase one so uh, the public can just be rest assured this is phase two this is completely different uh, spending and funding okay, thank you we have a motion before the body to approve is there any further discussion to that motion okay seeing none all those in favor of that motion say aye aye, aye. those opposed nay the motion prevails Next, we'll go to the public works portion of our meeting. Uh, we have an informational presentation for Highway 55 and Highway 61 intersection modifications from the Department of MnDOT. Nick? Yes, I just wanted to take a minute to introduce our South Area Manager from MnDOT, John Solberg, who's going to uh, share some information about the upcoming project for this uh, intersection change here that we'll see a little bit later this summer. So, take it away, John. Solberg, it's nice to see you again. I know we've nice worked through well. relationship in the past. Absolutely. Uh, kind of a small bridge project. Uh, yeah, we got one of those. You, you know, know, one of those. I think uh, that's kept you busy for a while down here. <laughs> you bet. Uh, welcome back. We're glad to see you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, um, I'm here tonight just to give you some basic information on this project we have out here in Hastings at 55 and 61 uh, starting this summer. And so, as you'll see on, on the handouts that I gave you and up on the screen as well, uh, the yellow is to indicate a new uh, or a second left turn lane on 55 west or eastbound into town. And uh, there's a couple things about that right off the bat that you'll notice. Now the red there is a new concrete median which will effectively close uh, the, the access to Eddy Street. So that's a, a change to the folks that are using Eddy Street. Um, but what that does is improves the uh, actual mobility on 55 and somewhat on 61, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, first, I'd like to talk uh, a little bit about Eddy Street and, and the change there. So approximately where that red line is, where the center median uh, will be built, that's where the left turn lane is to go into Eddy Street southbound. So that will be closed. It's relatively low volume. We have talked to the uh, strip mall there and, and the various entities that live within that and uh, haven't really gotten any kind of strong feedback against at this point. Um, and so we're, we're uh, fairly confident and happy with that uh, as, a, uh, as access is there's alternate access to those locations. Um, now regarding the left turn lane, um, basically, this comes from what we call congestion management and safety program. So the whole reason we're doing this is to address safety and capacity around the metro region. And so this last year, approximately six projects were picked around the metro region to where we could invest um, relatively lower amounts of money 
but make significant impacts in congestion and delays around the Twin Cities metro region. This project is the only one that was selected in the Dakota County area. What this one will do is effectively double the amount of left turning capacity for that eastbound 55 and as I sat in that uh, long line out there tonight at about 5 o'clock, I realized exactly why we're doing it. So, um, but what that will do, um, again, is double that left turn capacity. And so right now, just as an example, there's, uh, during that peak hour, there's 223 cars that want to turn left. And so you get to split that now into two lanes instead of one. So that'll be a, a lot better, which means twice as many should be able to get through on that green light. Um, then additionally, what this also does uh, by allowing that left turn lane, we had to, we pushed uh, the through traffic, which you'll see there is the middle lane. It's a left and a through. And that's important because actually relates to the right turning traffic. So in the right turning traffic in the PM, for instance, there are 350 right turning cars, which is a pretty significant amount. And when you have that combined with what was the uh, through traffic, it just slows up those right turning traffic. So now they get their own lane, should be able to get out of that intersection that much quicker. Um, there's benefits in the morning, but the PM has got the, the largest benefits. Now speaking of the lights specifically, um, as part of the project, we will not be able to do flashing yellows on the east and westbound legs of the intersection. And in part, I'll have you just refer to that layout. You see how much longer the distance is between um, north and southbound, how far between those crosswalks and that sort of thing. Now compare that to the east-west. What effectively happens if we try to put flashing yellows in there is the cars turning left out of the uh, uh, pharmacy would combine and the turning movements would hit the cars turning left from eastbound 55. So it's just not possible to do that. So we'll maintain that protected left that is currently out there right now. Um, another thing we're working and we, uh, Nick has brought up is there's some emergency service beacons on the signals out there. And right now, um, I'm not sure in the, what the, uh, how well they're working for the city, so we're gonna try and optimize that for the city as well with this project. It wasn't something until we realized just re recently with the input, so we'll be adjusting that during the contract period uh, with, the, with the contractors. Um, other than that, I mean, that's really the, the project in itself. Now the impacts right now, and I, I made the mistake early, earlier, Melanie, it's not right after uh, Memorial Day. It, it, it looks like construction right now, we're targeting uh, that late July time period and should last approximately a month, thereabouts. But I, I will caution you that we haven't gotten the contractor on board yet. And so the contractor ultimately has a lot of input into how fast and when they can do that sort of work. But that's what we're targeting. We want to avoid the Rivertown days. Certainly we want to avoid the uh, cruises that are going on. So um, I should uh, uh, also point out that there is just a small portion of work that has to take place on 61 itself. And that's because we have to take that concrete median on the north side of the intersection and shorten it up just a little bit so that we can get those left turning cars into the proper lane. And again, that kind of goes back to why we can't get the flashing yellow in there and make that work for this intersection. So. Uh, that is basically the project. Um, are there questions? Uh, I'm certainly happy to answer any. Thank you, Mr. Solberg. Uh, questions, Councilmember Balsanic. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Okay, um, we've got two drawings here, and we've got, and, and this one duplicates what you have up there. We've got this one, um, and and uh, referring back to what was in the newspaper and then initial. Uh, drawings that were presented to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the larger one here is not showing a through lane. Correct. This and is was an earlier version. I okay. apologize. So we have that we have that now in place. That is the correct one on which the I, one page. Which is very important when I, th this is part of Ward Two, which I represent, and I have a uh, an email a newsletter that goes out to 250 or so constituents. And so when I sent this out to them and I said, you know, give me some feedback, it was, oh my God, you know, we can't go through into Walgreens. 
So I said I would just double check on that to oh, make sure. Oh, absolutely, and we'll, I can uh, send that revised layout if that's helpful. That, the that would be great, and then okay. I can forward that on to uh, constituents. Uh, we're not going to have any problem with that. Now, we're, uh, with the shifting of lanes, we've got that uh, barrier uh, on the east side of 60. We've got this guy right here. That's the... Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, a curb uh, barrier. Uh, are, are we, we're not touching that, we're leaving that alone? Um, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, yes, that's correct. We, we are not touching the east side of 61. So that through lane, are people gonna have to kind of jog a little to the right and then go into the parking lot or are they gonna be okay with that? There may be a, a slight movement to the right, but ultimately, I mean, as they're coming across the intersection, it's probably a difference of about five feet. Okay. In in that movement over to get into the intersection. Okay. On the on the east side. It, 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 and I know you've done due dil diligence on all of this, but um, maybe just a little footnote, just to double check that that was a concern, sure. again from constituents, uh, in terms of having a. A good through flight there. Uh, one thing that everybody liked was that we've got a separation of the through lane from the right turn lane uh, and this is going to make things I think move along a little bit better as well uh, uh, so that you don't have people uh, going straight blocking people who want to make a right turn on our on a red light uh, so that's great uh, as well. Um, you, you talked about the yellow flashing lights for left turns and that we're not going to have those. Uh, are, are we going to change any of the timing of the light then? Well, in other words, the left turn, we've got two lanes for left turns. Is that going to be shorter, longer? Are you going to re-examine that? Because I know, I, uh, there, there, I know that there's a, a state MnDOT uh, traffic light expert is it's it's uh, it is that person who <laughs> i think we have an expert for about everybody it yes, seems like uh, some days and, and i mean it, it it you know it may be on the surface humorous but i can certainly understand the importance of it uh especially after i tried to and at, well not tried we actually did get uh the timing of the lights on 55 at uh at westview and pleasant and mm -hmm. general sieben uh updated so that uh, we've got better traffic control uh, in terms of, uh, especially on left turns uh, for that. But are, are you going to be doing any changes on the timing of the lights then? Mr. <coughs> Mayor, council members, uh, yeah, actually that's a, that's a great point. So part of this, the intersection itself, once we get that completed, MnDOT needs to come back through and do retiming on the signal, which will ultimately help the whole 61 corridor moving through town and should potentially help with some of the green time then that's going across 61 at those various locations. Okay, and that and that's great because I, it is time consuming. It's not something where somebody comes out and just opens up the box no. and goes 10 extra seconds or something right. like that, but it, it does involve, uh, I hate to say calculus. I always try to get by every day without using calculus, <laughs> but uh, in this case, it's probably going to be something we're going to need. Uh, and, and, and again, just to double check, um, I did not receive any negative comments about closing off Eddy Street to 61. And the main concern there is um, uh, making the left turn off of 55 to go south onto Eddy. Um, and, and again, there were no comments from the strip mall at all. There, we did not receive any comments uh, that okay. would... Uh, make us rethink closing that line. Yeah, it, it, well, it'll take a while for everybody to, everyone to get used to. If somebody wants to get to the beer stube off of 61, they're going to have to go down to, uh, is that 12, 12th Street over by Perkins? Yeah, 12th Street, around. Nick is saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and then turn into the parking lot and then proceed on around. It's a, it's a longer way to go, but uh, uh, it's something they'll just have to, learn to live with uh, eventually. Okay. All right. Well, that takes care of my questions. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Council Member Vaughn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two quick questions. Um, when you put the new median in, will there be a sign saying no left turn or will it be painted for people coming off of Eddie trying to take a left? 
for uh, education time for a little oh, bit? <laughs> sure, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. You, generally, on those sorts of situations, we, we do put a one-way okay. sign, so that indicates Perfect. people will only be able to make that right turn lane. I don't know the specifics on what the signing plan are, though. Got it. Council Member? Mr. Mayor, and I just recommend that maybe next fall, then the planning committee looks at backwards. Let's go look at the four-way stop sign that was put in back closer to the 11th Street, right by Salvation Army, mm -hmm. that maybe we could revisit that because would we still need a four-way stop sign there with this closure? Okay. Less traffic 12, coming sorry. down. Yeah, but I would say after it's, let's let, see what happens. But, okay. Thank you. Good suggestion. Okay. Also, is there uh, we have a motion? We, oh, it's informational. That's right. Okay, so that's good. Okay. Uh, so is that everyone uh, wish? If you're fully informed? Okay, that's great. We're fully informed. Thank you, Mr. Solborg, for Thank being you, here Mr. tonight. And we look forward to the project. <laughs> Thank you. I'll leave that. Okay. Next, uh, we uh, go to Community Development Council. Uh, before you tonight, uh, you'll see the new uh, agreement that's uh, been revised. It's uh, before you. And uh, John, uh, welcome to the meeting. I'll have you introduce it. And it's through, in relation to art space. Uh, option to purchase property. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. As the mayor had pointed out, I did send a revised agreement to, to you today, outline some of the marked up changes, and we'll go over those in just a moment. Uh, but the main issue we have here tonight is to authorize signature of an option agreement for a portion of Block 1 for the art space project. And I know the council is aware of some of the activities that have been going on related to art space over the last five weeks or so in essence a project that was really not on our radar screen because of funding has become something that could quite possibly happen due to the participation of funding from Dakota County CDA to make the project happen. One of the requirements in order to be eligible for some of the grant funding at Dakota CDA is to have a real estate option on the property. Essentially what this document does is holds the property for art space for a period of time. It allows them, to, uh, allows them to, to know that they have development rights to the property for that given period of time, does not give them ownership of the property. The, the time period for that has been amended from the original agreement. Originally, we were looking at keeping the option available till the end of July or end of June of this year. After consultations with Dakota CDA, they recommended that that option period be extended to December 31st, 2015. And the reason behind that being one of the things that ArtSpace will be applying for are these low income housing tax credits. And the decision on that will not occur until late in 2015. And so they wanted to preserve the option availability for that. In a review of that request, that was certainly acceptable to us. The other thing we did do within the document is more narrowly define the property itself that would be part of it. We are looking at block one, which is that area that is on the north side of 2nd Street between Tyler and the railroad tracks. Right now, it's about 2.75 acres. We're looking at one acre of property for the art space development. If you're familiar with that property, the parking lot that's just east of graphic design, it's essentially that that property. Uh, one acre would be 23, 24 feet north of that property line if you drew it straight across. So the intent of this is to get a development project that would be fronting along 2nd Street to take advantage of that location. Again, what ArtSpace uh, has determined through their market study is that a market is available for about 30 to 40 units, uh, artist units within that building itself. So this would be the first of a, of a couple of different steps that we would have related to this project. The option agreement itself would only limit the, uh, limit the ability of art space to deal with that property, doesn't give out any ownership, doesn't set any terms at this point for what the, the price of that property would be. These are things that we're gonna be speaking more with the Finance Committee of City Council on. Uh, the next meeting we have with them is scheduled at 7 a.m on Monday to talk about these issues. And th the way that the de agreement is set up, Hedra is the owner of the property. And so what we're doing tonight is asking for the authorization for Hedra to sign the agreement. And Hedra will be considering that at their meeting coming up this Thursday. 
So I can stand for any questions if you have them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that presentation, John. Uh, Council, the site is before us. So what's your wish? Councilmember Schultz. Um, John, um, in the information that we had for our meeting last week, um, the CDA deadline um, for requiring art space to select is April 15th. Has that changed? Uh, council member, the, the April 15th deadline was to secure a site. And in conversations we've had with CDA, the property has been narrowed to this site only. And so I've, I believe we've met those obligations that CDA has sent out. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Alonji makes a motion to approve, seconded by Councilmember Balsanic. That motion is now before the body. Discussion to the motion. Councilmember Balsanic. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Has art space, uh, they, they said that, you know, with the research they did, uh, that uh, it looked like uh, they were okay for 35 units, uh, uh, artist loft space, livable space. Uh, it, it, and I've seen that figure kind of change now a little bit, somewhere between 35 and 45. Are they refining that, or are they still sticking to the 35? Sure. Council member, that uh, seems to be an, an open question. I think, uh, I know from the market research, uh, the report, I think, stated 37. In conversations with ArtSpace, it's been anywhere between 30 and 40. And so I think what they'll do is put a design team onto the site, determine what the best yield could be, and then bring that forward. Okay. And then uh, it, have they given any indication as to whether the entire property will be used for uh, apartments, or are they talking about commercial retail in addition to the apartments? Sure. Uh, council member, we have had some discussions with them on other space, whether it be commercial or retail. It sounds like they're open to considering that. I don't know if that would be part of the final uh, proposal that would be brought back, but uh, it's something they're looking at. Okay, uh, and, uh, and that one acre site is gonna be enough for surface parking then, or are they thinking about uh, enclosed uh, parking? Sure, a council member, what their typical model would have is uh, parking for the units would be underground, generally at a one-for-one at a one ratio. Anything above that would be on the surface. In speaking to them, they're comfortable that the one-acre lot would be sufficient. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Council, we have a motion. Council Member Lange. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to briefly express the excitement that I, and I know other council members feel uh, as we were talking about this at the meeting before and I know the members of the public they're very excited about this this is a you know, within a few years we could really have something really I mean, we already have some great stuff already happening downtown we could really add to that in a wonderful way and enhance it with uh, more residents in the area uh, more artists in the area leading to more events leading to more support of our local businesses down there which in turn has the wonderful multiplier effect so uh, with the Hudson project on one side and this on the other side anchoring the other side it's really very exciting and I really appreciate staffs uh, attentiveness to this uh, and, the, and taking the opportunity, seizing the opportunity that came before us. Also want to express appreciation uh, to Dakota County for the great work that they did in making this available to us, we hope, uh, and, and, and remaining open to it as we move forward. So if this works out, it's going to be pretty exciting stuff there and really appreciate you being on top of this, John. Thank you. Thank you. I think when we talk about the riverfront renaissance, that's having a lot of meetings. Uh, we take a look at what's happening with the Hudson, what's happening tonight when we approved uh, the Renaissance project uh, with the pavilion, when we take a look at the art space project that's in front of us, when we take a look at uh, some of the businesses downtown, the uh, you know, newly open like Bella Vista and things like that nature, uh, uh, it's really kind of an exciting time. So thank, I echo your words, Council Member. Okay, we have a motion before the body. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Thank you, John. Uh, next, we have a, the approval of creation of a public arts grant program and task force. Melanie? Your Honor and Council, staying on an arts theme, late 2014, the City Council directed staff to do some research and develop a, a public arts grant program and, and structure around that. 
Um, so we, we went back and um, asked a number of questions and we have a proposal before the council tonight. The first question we asked was the public purpose for creating such a program um, and Minnesota statute does allow for a community to create a, a public art program funded by uh, public dollars. And the, we also looked at what would be funded as part of this. Um, again, Minnesota statute allows artistic organizations to be funded using public dollars. We met with the Finance Committee of the Council on February 12th to discuss some parameters. Um, the first uh, question was to uh, talk about the definition, policy of art, and the Finance Committee um, recommended that um, general support for the program going forward with it, but that we define art broadly to not necessarily focus on a fixed piece or a sculpture, but also include performance or um, art that may be a little bit more transient in nature. Um, the second piece that the committee talked through was the structure. Typically, we've, we've had um, advisory commissions that review, um, uh, act in an advisory capacity to the city council. Um, we talked about whether we wanted to create another advisory commission, and it was the Finance Committee's recommendation that because we're looking at this as a pilot program, a task force concept seems to be the best fit. So the recommendation is that we would create a seven or so member task force um, that would have a fixed length of time. Right now it's set to expire. Um, the recommendation is that it would be set to expire December 31st, 2016, and the task force would have um, fairly generalized guiding principles to move forward on a public arts grant program rather than creating an advisory commission, a standing advisory commission. Um, the third discussion item was the scope of the task force and it was um, recognized that with all of the exciting projects going on along the riverfront renaissance and the components of art that are included that the um, that that be a focus for the task force to um, to focus on for um, the first um, 18 months or so of its uh, of its existence. And the final question had to do with funding. Um, the finance committee recommended that up to $10,000 be allocated for this pilot program. We currently have $2,500 in an arts um, account right now that would clearly be uh, meet the needs of the um, and the direction of this kind of a, a structure and the council recommends up to 7,500 additionally be allocated out of fund balance um, for a total allocation of $10,000. The committee also recommended that should the task force not make any funding recommendations in 2015, that the dollars be able to be rolled over for the same purpose in 2016, again, to fund a public, a public art grant program. So the action before you tonight, Your Honor and Council, are three, is threefold. The first is to create a public arts grant program. The second is to create a task force to act in advisory capacity for the council. And the third is to allocate $10,000 with a $7,500 transfer from the general fund, total allocation of $10,000 in 2015 for this purpose. Be happy to stand for any questions. Okay, council, uh, this item is before us. Council Member Schultz. Um, Your Honor, um, I will make a motion. Can we do that all in one? Um, yep. All of the thing um, that, as Melanie so carefully sketched it out there, I make the that finance motion. committee's recommendations. Yes. Okay. The, the finance committee's recommendations have been uh, been moved. Is there a second to that motion? Seconded by Councilmember Alangi. That motion is now before the body. Your Honor, I have a, a question, um, Melanie. Um, as we get through um, 2016, um, and we get um, a lot of of what we might have in terms of our public art um, at the riverfront, it, it, it will be possible for the funding to be used for other um, community art elsewhere in the city, correct? Your Honor and Council Members, absolutely that would be the intent, um, focusing primarily on the riverfront at this point, but um, broadening it out throughout the community um, going forward. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, the other thing I was going to say, I think um, I'm really happy that we, we've put together something like this that has some structure because we get um, requests a lot um, you know all the time for people wanting um, us to fund various um, projects or programs and this will give us um, first of all parameters so we know 
we can guide what we're looking for. And second of all, um, it I think it says to the community that we are very interested in providing art, um, not as something that you have to go necessarily to museum and look at, which I am not against. I like to do that too. Um, but this will beautify the city and provide it in a public space. And I'm really excited to see um, how uh, this um, works as we move forward. Thank you. Uh, I, I have uh, a couple of questions. Councilmember Brox, did you have a statement for? Why don't, why don't you go first, Councilmember Brox? Question. Please. Um, one of my questions is, I have done some grant writing in the past, and sometimes there are provisions in the grants that say that you cannot use the grant for salaries and things of that nature. Do we make any kind of parameter like that? Are we meaning to leave it fairly open as to how the money can be used, Councilmember Your Honor and Councilmember Brox? I think at this point we left we have some parameters on the funding I'm, I'm just pulling up the page right now um, we do allow salaries at this point okay. um, I, I would note we took this model from a number of other communities and we would ask the ability to be flexible as and if we need to make changes but at this point salaries would be included as an allowable expense okay thank you is there further discussion? I just have a question as to the uh, the technical aspect of the task force. How many members will be on the task force? And uh, is that something that the city council will then approve the membership of the task force? And when the task force makes a decision, does it come to city council for approval, or do they have you know final say in that in that realm of responsibility? Your Honor and Council, it's kind of the new first time we've explored this, but the, the thought was it would be modeled closely after an advisory um, commission structure, whereas it's advisory in nature, appointed by the Council and ad advising the Council per se. So um, we would ask at, at some point, uh, we'll, we'll get an application process out here soon, up to seven members would okay. be a member of the task force to answer your, the question about that, act in an advisory capacity. Um, the final, um, the, the final uh, funding approval, I, I think the intent of the finance committee was it was going to come back to the city council. So similar to an advisory commission, but just a fixed term as far as the existence of the, the, uh, the task force. We used to have down here at City Hall, City Hall, and I don't know, Melanie, maybe you could answer because it's been a few years, but uh, that was, a, I think, three people in charge of an arts consulting group uh, that were involved with the city, and they were in charge of the art that we see here at City Hall on the walls and things like that. Um, are they still in existence? And it may not, they may not be. Um, Your Honor and Council, I. I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, I know that they've had previously been very active in moving art around City Hall and repurposing it. Um, they, they haven't done that recently, so I'll have to circle back on that. Yeah, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Maybe uh, the future of this task force, and if it if it's uh, you know if it's something that's ongoing, maybe perhaps that's something that they could come under their fold in the future, because uh, we have a lot of valuable art here. Uh, at City Hall up on the second floor and around this building so okay is there any other uh, discussion to the motion okay seeing none all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. those opposed nay the motion prevails uh, next council we have uh, to approve the levy park renaming that process we have that uh, in your packet uh, we have our distinguished parks director uh, Chris Jenkins here. Chris, welcome to the meeting. Well, thank you for such kind Yourself words, speed. distinguished. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, here tonight to discuss the uh, renaming process for Levy Park. Um, as you're aware through the council memo, uh, this project or this process began in January with the Parks and Recreation Commission after receiving a recommendation by council to, uh, uh, to rename Levy Park with uh, the substantial improvements and redevelopment that's happening on the riverfront. So the Parks and Recreation Commission met in, in January to start the process, to start generating some name ideas. Um, and then at that point, staff solicited information from the community through uh, social media website and the newspaper. And 
started receiving some names in. So in February, we took a list of probably 25 names uh, back to the Park and Recreation Commission, and their charge at that point was to narrow it down to three. And those are the three that are listed in the memo, the Riverwalk, the Riverfront, and Riverwalk Park. Um, so it, their charge to narrow that down to three was complete at that point. Um, guidance from there is to come back the following month in March and select a finalist with some rationale. So at our March Parks and Recreation Commission meeting, we had a, a very robust conversation with our Park and Rec Commission um, with a lot of, of visioning and uh, marketability and branding potential conversations that were happening about this entire stretch of river. So the conversation quickly shifted from uh, an, a focus on Levy Park proper to the land, the public land between the CP Rail Bridge and Lock and Dam. And how can we make, uh, how, can, how can the name or a name generate some excitement, some atmosphere for this entire stretch of land? So the Park and Rec Commission shifted focus a little bit and instead of uh, desiring to name Levy Park itself, they chose to recommend to council for your uh, consideration an umbrella name for that entire stretch of land as Hastings River Walk. So that's the, the name that they've suggested for an umbrella while retaining the existing names, Levy Park, JC Park, Lake Rebecca, and River Flats um, as identifiers within that space. So if a friend is coming from the cities and you want to meet at the Hastings River Walk, well, meet me at JC Park in the River Walk. Meet me at Levy Park in the River Walk. Meet me at the Pavilion. Um, and we generated some other names for uh, an art garden that's going to be down there as well. Just stuff we're thinking about too. So um, that's what's before council tonight for consideration. I'll be happy to stand for any questions. Okay, thank you, Chris, for that presentation. Uh, council, this item is before us. Councilmember Nelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Chris, I, th I think at this point, um, you know, there was no council committee discussion on this. And, and I think what we should probably do with um, some of these renaming parts is, is bring that before the, the council committee uh, before it gets to the city council as well. So, and, and, you know, this is our first shot at this anyway. So, I mean, I think it was a good process and I think it worked out really well and came up with some great ideas here. But I think what I'd like to do, Your Honor, is to, is to move this to Park and Rec Committee um, and have them take a look at it. I myself am the chair of that committee, um, so I'd like to take a look at that before we got to this point here, before we recommend it to the full city council. Um, and I think we had some dates that we were kind of kicking around, Melanie as well. Um, I don't know if we arrived at a particular date for a meeting yet, um, but it would be in the near, near future that we would get that to the committee. Okay. Uh, there's a motion to refer this to Park and Rec Committee. Is there a second to that motion? Second by Council Member Vaughn. Uh, Councilmember Nelson, you're right where I'm going to be. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the, the council, I've really enjoyed watching this process. Uh, all the suggestions I went to the Park and Rec Commission. Uh, I appreciate all the effort that they came forward and the three names, and I, I understand their rationale. Uh, but we as council members have not had a chance to vet it very much. We have certainly had a chance to talk to our constituencies about it, but we haven't had a chance really at this point uh, to impact that decision uh, at you know up to this point except maybe throwing in a suggestion uh, so I, I think that's a good idea uh, I, I know I've heard some other great names of for example there's the bridge crossing it used to be a ferry crossing you know the CP crossing so I've had some people talk about riverfront crossings at Riverwalk or things of that nature so I think we need to uh, vet this a little bit more uh, at council level it is a big deal it's not just about Hastings here uh, sure it's our riverfront you know, we're, we're familiar with the levee and we're familiar with J.C. Park, but we want to make sure that we put some excitement to the name and also a regional attraction, that people in the region of the Twin Cities and our neighbors nearby understand that the, what we're creating here is, is a theme that, um, you know, will bring excitement, get, you know, to uh, pique people's curiosity. And uh, I think we need a little more of, a, of, of an analysis of that. And so I appreciate your motion, Council Member, to... Uh, to do that. Uh, further discussion? Councilmember Balsanic. Thank you, Mayor. I, Chris, I want to thank you for uh, uh, ushering this through with the Commission uh, over the last few months. And 
again, this is a new process that we're going through, uh, and it has been fascinating for me uh, to look at uh, not only thinking about renaming Levy Park, but uh, also looking at the history of how uh, many of our parks were, uh, were named. Uh, uh, down the street from where I live, Wilson Park, uh, was named Wilson Park. It started out, interestingly enough, it was a, a kind of a lumber storage area uh, back with the early settlers. And uh, Spring Street, which uh, borders that park on the west side, is called Spring Street because there was a spring there. And that's where uh, everybody would bring their cows and their uh, horses and uh, other livestock down to get a drink in the morning and a drink uh, in the afternoon. Uh, uh, the house where my wife and I live right now uh, had a barn in the backyard uh, with, uh, near as we can tell, a cow and a horse. Uh, in, in addition to chickens, I don't think they heard of the chickens down there to get a drink. Well, but Not under uh, this council. No, <laughs> not under this council, yeah. yeah. Never had chickens. I actually forget I even brought that up. Uh, but. Uh, uh, Wilson Park was named Wilson Park because a mayor, uh, a, for, uh, a mayor uh, named Wilson, uh, donated a, uh, uh, a fairly good size of money back then. I, as I recall, it was two thousand uh, dollars to uh, turn that lumber storage area into a uh, park, and uh, with that, somehow uh, we ended up with the name Wilson Park because there was a financial investment on the part of that mayor. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting that our mayor uh, <laughs> Where's my check make, like where you're going, <laughs> make, make a donation, but he certainly is free to do so if he wants to. Uh, it's Paul, Paul Hicks Park. This kind of has a, a nice at ring the river to front? it. Yeah, at the riverfront. Uh, at any rate, I, my, my own dentist said that we should call it bridge work dental dam <laughs> levy park <laughs> uh, and, and those of you that have been to the dentist recently can probably figure out all that stuff uh, i the, the the i i think it's good that we get it to a committee because uh, this is over 50 pages of uh, uh emails and and some documents that i received either via telephone call or through the internet uh all of them came, uh, we'll blame Melanie, it's all Melanie's fault, because all of this started when the last council update, uh, uh, or administrator's update, excuse me, came out, and it was mentioned that there were the three uh, nominations for renaming Levy Park. Um, the, um, uh, I, I received a letter from the Pioneer Room from Cindy Smith uh, and Shirley Delaska, uh, and uh, the two of them did research on the levy. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, the research showed that uh, passenger ships uh, docked down at what we now call J.C. Park, uh, and and uh, the uh, commerce type uh, river boats uh, docked. Uh, where Levy Park is right now, and uh, that that's in between the railroad tracks and and the American Legion, uh, so there were you know two different uh, uh, you know landing landing areas there. Uh, the um, uh, and as near as they can tell in their research, uh, the only uh, military personnel who ever left. Hastings via the river uh, were members of the uh, of the uh, uh, first Minnesota, and uh, they went off to the Civil War. Uh, all other personnel who left for military service after that uh, left either by train from Hastings or they left by train from up in the St. Paul area. Uh, there is one thing that I, I think. Uh, really does bear some significance here uh, that, that was brought up uh, in, in the letter from the Pioneer folks. And they said something to consider when renaming public areas, uh, especially public areas that have been commonly named 
for well over a century uh, is how long it will take for the digital mapping companies uh, to change the name in their records. Uh, the area will obviously continue being called the levy by the local people. Uh, and it does bear asking, is MapQuest then going to jump right on this and change the name? Uh, renaming public areas also tends to add confusion for future researchers and planners uh, to try and figure out where the heck Levy Park was, for example. Uh, and I, I, I can say uh, without any hesitation, and, and I, I'm going to ask you a question here about that in a second, but the overwhelming majority of the, of the emails that I got from people said they did not want to change the name. They wanted to leave it as Levy Park. And uh, I'm mentioning this so, you know, when it does get to uh, the Park and Recs Committee, uh, that, that you do consider that, and I, I will pass all of this information along to uh, the committee. But uh, many people said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. When we think of a levee, or we, when we think of Levee Park, we think of, you know, the, uh, the area down there. And uh, I wrote as, I, at one point I put my hat on uh, as uh, American Legion commander and uh, was asked by our board of directors from the American Legion uh, to express uh, the desire to again leave the name as it is. Uh, the, the, you know, in terms of the, in terms of the uh, definition of levy, what is a levy? A levy is a landing, uh, you know, from which we had, as I said earlier, commerce and passengers getting on and off ships. Uh, there, there is a, uh, a definition of a levy that refers to a dam, uh, something that is holding water back. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think that the people of Hastings think of our levy park as a, as a levy park that was holding back, uh, uh, holding back the water. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, this is something, again, I think that, that we need to consider. There, there's one other thing that I, that I think does bear mentioning, uh, and that is that, um, if I can find it here real quickly, that, um, yeah, the Hastings Women's Club uh, did an awful lot of work down there uh, at the Levee Park, uh, uh, adding, uh, plantings, uh, gardens, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, here we go. The, the, levy, the, the levy continued to serve as a park, largely configured uh, based on a 1920 design. Uh, and and uh, we do have some photographs of that uh, in our archives, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, what, what's being pointed out here is that it, by 1980, uh, the park system was again in need of improvements and the placement of the old swing span, the replacement, excuse me, of the old swing span railroad bridge with a new lift span, which is now in place, uh, was the in instigation for expansion and improvements uh, down at Levy Park. The Hastings Heritage Preservation Commission joined forces with local veterans organizations uh, to create the new Veterans Memorial Levy Park. Uh, that was the name that was approved in 1980, Veterans Memorial Levy Park. Uh, and uh, uh, so as, as not as far back as 1980, we had, you know, something uh, that, that was approved as, as the name of the park. Uh, it's been shortened Levy Park, and that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, I, I did receive uh, emails from people who said that uh, with all due respect to our veterans, uh, we have enough things honoring veterans in the Hastings area. And being a veteran myself, 22 years in the military, uh, I can be sympathetic to that. Uh, I, I don't take offense uh, at someone stating that. Uh, we have a memorial at the Hastings Veterans Home. 
we have uh, the Sailor and Soldiers uh, uh, Memorial Cemetery uh, off of uh, First and uh, County 42. We have a Veterans Memorial at Roadside Park, and we have a reconstituted one that's going to be going in uh, now at the levee, uh, at the levee park as well. Uh, and there was some feeling that we should perhaps lop off the veterans uh, part of it uh, and perhaps the memorial part of it. And so if you have Veterans Memorial Levy Park and you take away Veterans and Memorial, you're back to Levy Park again, which is what, again, the majority of the people uh, tended to want. Uh, Riverwalk, which is the recommendation coming from the commission, is the name of... Uh, parks, uh, a couple of parks, one in River Falls, uh, one in, uh, 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 also one in uh, Stillwater. Uh, might that create some confusion? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, these are things that I think uh, do bear some, uh, uh, you know, some review uh, regarding all of that. Uh, I, the question that I had was, uh, in, in, during the time that you were requesting uh, ideas for name changes and so forth, uh, out of those uh, requests that came in, how many did say leave it alone, just leave it as Levy Park? Do you know? Approximately, uh, you know. Approximately a dozen. Okay. Yeah. So there was a feeling that went, you know, went to the uh, commission. Yeah. Uh, stating that particular case then too. Uh, well, I, I, I'm glad we're, we are referring this to, uh, uh, to committee and I will forward all of this uh, on to you. A lot of this, like I say, was done. Uh, also, jo uh, Justin Fortney uh, uh, did a lot of the research on this as well. And for the public's information, uh, there was a study that was done uh, as part of the pl the pre-planning for the new bridge, uh, and it is a uh, it, it's a study that uses a form called the Minnesota Architecture History Inventory Form, uh, and that form is used when something like a, a new bridge is being uh, considered into an area that has uh, historic significance. Uh, this document is. I believe about 30 pages long. Have you? Did you take a look at it? No, I haven't yeah. seen that. Uh, uh, Justin forwarded it to me, and if anybody is interested in uh, taking a look at it, uh, uh, you could contact me or contact Justin uh, uh, at City Hall. Uh, uh, Justin is a is a staff member, works out of the planning uh, department here at the at, at the city. Uh, and he can put you in the direction, or I can put you in the direction of this document. It includes uh, photographs uh, of the levee and the river area, uh, steamships, paddle wheelers, uh, barges. There are pictures of uh, uh, entertainment barges. They're, they used to put a band on a barge, pull in, people would get on board, pay, on board, pay some money. They take them out into the middle of the river and they cruise up and down and they dance all night. Uh, a lot of fun. Maybe again, that's something we can consider for uh, uh, for Levy Park uh, uh, down the line. But uh, uh, it's got some fascinating, fascinating history uh, on Levy Park. Uh, there was a railroad spur that went from the Hudson Building uh, over to the uh, uh, over to the railroad bridge uh, that was taken out just as recently as I believe 1981. Uh, it, it was still there up until that point. Uh, so, I, but I do, you know, again, want to reiterate, uh, uh, Chris, uh, the fine work that you've done on this. Uh, you were pretty much the guinea pig on this, uh, you know, with it being the first time. And uh, so we're going to oil some gears and uh, uh, get the roadmap out again and, and take a look at this. and. Uh, again, I want I want to thank the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission uh, for for uh, taking the time and the energy to uh, bring this uh, to us. I think it's it's been a very healthy discussion, and uh, they have certainly been a very good part of that. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, uh, thank you, Councilmember. And, and again, I think that's why this is important. I think you know when we take a look at the name Levy Park, of course, all of them were people who live here. Are used to it, 
Uh, that's part of, of some historical note. And in my, in my view, to a certain extent, that's part of the problem. Uh, I think we need to take a look at uh, uh, how we could name this area and be sensitive to a regional interest. And um, uh, I think that'll be the challenge of the committee. Um, and maybe they can work that word in there somewhere. Maybe they can't. But I think that's, that will be the challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes history is making history. And uh, as we uh, unfold what we're doing down there, uh, it's a new day. And uh, we'll just see how the uh, committee uh, uh, gets further information. And I appreciate Council Member Balsan, I think you bring this uh, information and emails forward. Uh, certainly part of the discussion. Councilmember Balsanic. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have checked my notes here before I said thank you. Uh, two other things uh, regarding this. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission uh, will be looking at this very idea as well tomorrow uh, at their uh, monthly meeting. That's tomorrow evening. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to add uh, to this whole mix, and that would be uh, the opportunity to sell naming rights to the park uh, as, as, a, um, as a way to uh, get some additional revenue for our parks department. Uh, there are uh, many public spaces uh, in the area, in the state, and of course around the country uh, that uh, have done this, and uh, there, there could be a substantial amount of money uh, that could be uh, harnessed uh, through the use of naming rights. So I'd, I'd like to recommend to the committee that they take a look at that. If we can have Target Field public funding, if we can have uh, Mall of America Field public funding right on down the line, uh, maybe we can have something uh, along the same line for, uh, for Levy Park. Okay. Uh, oh, also to thank Mildred Ruhr, uh, who spent an awful lot of time uh, uh, and uh, submitted uh, over a half dozen names uh, uh, for uh, uh, renaming uh, Levy Park, and also Judy Seidel as well, who also did a great amount of research on this as well. Uh, they were very forthcoming and very helpful uh, in, in my doing all of this research too. All right, I'm finally done, thank you. Okay, we have a motion before the body to send this uh, proposal to Park and Rec Committee. Uh, is there any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Okay, next we'll go to uh, Councilmember Balsanic. You asked that number or the uh, request for the live burning training uh, proposal be brought under administration number three. I turn it over to you. Thank you. With uh, caution. It, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a question. Uh, um, we, we have our police chief here. We don't. Is there anyone here from, from the fire department tonight by any chance? Your Honor and Council, no. No? There, okay. No, there isn't. Uh, and and it, it, that's understandable because this was supposed to be in the consent agenda. I have over, over time uh, had people ask if, um, uh, if it's all right to go and observe uh, the training process. And uh, I... Uh, I'm just bringing this up. I, I don't want to create any kind of uh, liability issues or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, what we're talking about here again is uh, a, a house uh, on a piece of property off of 160th Street uh, is being donated uh, uh, for, uh, for use as, as a fire training uh, uh, day. Uh, the house is uninhabitable. It's going to, it, it, it can't be uh, reused or reestablished. And so the fire department is going to be using it for training purposes. And we've done this in the past. And so what I would like to know is, uh, is, is this something that the public could come and watch? I'm not suggesting we sell popcorn and, uh, you know, candy and all those kinds of things. But uh, to, to what extent can this be observed? Mayor and Council, I did have some discussions with John Townsend about this activity and working on the agreement. I can't say for sure, but I, I think they would be concerned with anyone who is not directly related to the uh, training being on the property. The document here gives uh, only 
authority for those piece, people who are identified by the fire department to be on the property. So I don't think that would provide a very good opportunity for spectators to be there. And I also would be concerned there would be some liability with that. It was someone getting hurt or also the level of management that would have to go along with having spectators on the property at the same time. So I would somewhat be suggesting that does not happen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, do we need a motion on this? Then? I, do need I, I move that we accept. Uh, okay. Motion has been moved by Councilor Balsanek to uh, approve the training uh, document the, the staff brought forward. Uh, seconded by Council Member Schultz. Is there a further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The motion prevails. Uh, we're going to end our meeting now. I just want to announce that the City Council will be going into closed door session. Uh, for the purposes of issuing re issues relating to security and security systems. Uh, but however, prior for us to uh, motion to recess, we're going to recess, go into closed door session, and open up the meeting just to adjourn. Um, so we're going to take, at this time, comments from the audience. Is there any uh, comments from the audience tonight? Anyone here would like to speak to the council? Okay. Okay. Seeing none, council announcements. Announcements. Councilmember Schultz. Um, Hedro will be meeting um, Thursday night. This is a, we delayed our meeting by one week to, and we'll be discussing art space and a couple of other issues, I believe. 6.30 here in the chambers. Um, and next Monday, the 23rd Finance Committee meeting will be uh, getting together at 7 a.m. here at City Hall. I'll see how many people are here. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Council Member Vaughn. Uh, just a reminder, I have a Red Rock Commission meeting on the 26th of March, um, and that is now moved us at Newport City Hall. Okay. Any further announcements? Okay, I just have a few announcements. Uh, on Monday, March, uh, well, that's already here. On uh, Tuesday, March 17th, tomorrow, uh, the Heritage Preservation Commission will be meeting at 7, p at 7 p.m. at City Hall, the one that uh, was alluded to by Council Member Balsanic. On Monday, March 23rd, the Planning Commission will be meeting here in the Chambers at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. On Monday, April 6th, the Administration Committee, uh, Cha Chair Schultz, Balsanic, and Vaughn will be meeting at 6 p.m. at City Hall to discuss community special events. Uh, and I think, I, I assume that means the, the ordinance language that governs it, right? Community events? Your Honor and Council, it's a policy, some policy, policy yeah, considerations policy for the yeah. committee. Yep. Okay. Uh, the City Council's next regular scheduled meeting will be on Monday, April 6th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. Wednesday, April 8th, the Public Safety Committee, uh, Chair Alonji, Council Members Brox and Schultz will be meeting at 7 a.m. again. I know that's your favorite time, Council Member Schultz, at City Hall to discuss the fire study implementation update. There's no further... Uh, Issue, uh, Council Member uh, Alonji. Uh, let me check my notes. I have 7 a.m., but we'll check. <laughs> It'd be the first time. Uh, we'll take it. Okay. Your Honor and Council, I have it in the calendar for 7, but if we want to do 7.30, I will defer to the committee members. Um, we have to talk about this meeting. Okay, 7 a.m., Wednesday, April 8th, Public Safety Committee. Okay, there's no further announcements. I will accept a motion to recess for the purposes of the council going in closed door session to discuss security issues. Councilmember Brox makes that motion, seconded by Councilmember Nelson. Move to recess for purposes of going in closed door session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion prevails. I, I, uh, before we leave, I just want to thank Troop 23 for being at our council meeting tonight. You were very attentive. And uh, I hope you'll earn your citizen ba badges or merits. Uh, you certainly deserve it. Sit through a council meeting.